Hello and welcome to this film which is all about complex ions. It's the uh, second last film of the series in the high level periodicity topic and it looks at some of the properties of the D block elements which weren't covered in the previous film. And really and truly we're just going to be introducing some of the key terms that we use when we're talking about complex ions. We're going to be explaining a bit more about why they behave the way they do in the uh, fifth and final film. So. Um, Hopefully by the end of this film you'll be familiar with some of the key terms that we use when we're discussing what we call complex ions and um, you might also understand what a coordination number is and remember a few examples of complexes that have different coordination numbers. Okay, let's start off with a definition which is important to learn. Okay, this is the definition of what a complex ion is. As you can see here, it says it's an ion that forms when an ion or molecule forms coordinate bonds to a central cation. And there are some key terms here uh, listed, like ligand, acceptor, coordinate bond, and coordination number. And what we might do here is have a look at these four different complexes and see what features these diagrams have and where these terms come into it. So if we start off by looking at this ion here, okay, first of all you might notice it's got a square bracket around it and that the charge is put outside of that bracket. That is to show that the entire ion has a charge. If we didn't do that we might be uh, sort of uh, be accused of conveying the message that perhaps one of these water molecules carries the 3 plus charge but in, in reality this 3 plus charge is spread right over the whole ion so all these ions have a square bracket around them to show that the charge is spread over the ion this ion here is called a hexa aqua ion 3 ion but naming them is not important if you are shown a diagram of this you ought to be able to come up with this formula Okay or if you were given this formula you ought to be able to come up with that diagram but you do not have to be able to name these things which is quite handy because slightly complicated naming system focusing on this diagram we can see that the waters are the ligands the ligands are the things which form the coordinate bonds to this central uh, cation so we've got this central cation here that's an Fe3 plus ion how do we know it must be an Fe3 plus ion well because the Ion overall has a 3 plus charge and water molecules are neutral, electrically neutral, so this must be a 3 plus ion here. It's accepting pairs of electrons, so we're forming bonds, but the electrons are coming just from one direction, so these are coordinate bonds. We're showing these coordinate bonds by drawing arrows on the bonds, and the metal ion at the center, because it's accepting these electrons, is being called the acceptor. So these coordinate bonds are covalent bonds essentially that are being formed by the donation of a pair of electrons from one atom to another okay looking at this ion here we can now see that fluoride ions are our ligand fluoride ions are negative there's six of them around an Al3 plus ion so overall this complex which would be called hexafluoroaluminate 3 uh, has an overall charge of 3 minus here's a hexaamine cobalt 2 ion and here the ligand is ammonia cobalt is acting as the acceptor and the ammonia molecules with their lone pairs are donating electrons and forming those coordinate bonds and finally here we've got a tetraamine diaqua copper 2 complex with its 2 plus charge overall because all the ligands here there's two different types of ligand, but all the ligands here are electrically neutral. The copper ion has a 2 plus charge, so overall the complex is a 2 plus charge ion. Okay, And every one of these complexes we've looked at here had six coordinate bonds to that central cation. And so the coordination number in every one of these complexes was six. This doesn't necessarily mean that you've got six ligands. Okay, you can actually have ligands that form more than one coordinate bond, um, but then they're called poly, polydentate ligands. But we don't really have to look at those, so I'm going to introduce them without really introducing them, if you see what I mean. Okay, but what we are going to do is we're going to have a look now at some uh, complexes with different coordination numbers. And remembering that we don't have to name these things, but there are some names here. So, uh, common 
coordination number six. Okay, so these two here both have a coordination number of six because there are six coordinate bonds. We've just seen the hexa aqua iron three ion. Here's a hexa cyan uh, hexa three ion drawn here. Okay, we've got six ligands. The ligands here are cyanide ions, so Cn minus. Okay, and because each one of them has a negative charge and there's six of them around an Fe3 plus ion, overall the charge is 3 minus. So again, we don't have to name these things, but we would have to be able to write a formula if we were drawn a, given a diagram. We'd have to be able to figure out the charge of the complex if we knew what ligand was uh, um, coordinating to a particular acceptor and how many of those ligands there were. And I suppose here we can also see that coordination number six complexes often have this octahedral geometry which we introduced in the bonding topic. Here's an example of a coordination number four complex with four coordinate bonds. Here the coordinate bonds are between chloride ions, the ligand, to the acceptor, the copper two plus ion. How do I know this is a copper two plus ion? Well, the name tells me that's one thing, so this 2 actually refers to the oxidation number of the central ion. Um, but I can also figure it out from the charge on this complex, because I know that a chloride ion has a charge of 1 minus. I've got four of them, and in total, the charges add up to 2 minus, so this copper must have been a 2 plus. And again, here's the name of it, but we don't need to worry about that. There's a also possible to have a coordination number of two and there are other coordination numbers which we're not going to go into here but here is an example of a coordination number two um, and this is the diamine silver one ion so um, uh, ammonia here is the ligand coordinating to a silver one plus ion why is the complex one plus overall because ammonia doesn't have a charge so in other words, if they, you were asked to figure out the charge on the silver ion, you'd know it was 1 plus because your ligands are all electrically neutral here. Um, as far as the shape goes, it's now linear because these two coordinate bonds will get as far away from another, uh, one another as possible on this, on this silver sphere. You might wonder how we know this is tetrahedral because you can in fact have square planar geometries. That's not something to worry about with coordination number four. If you drew this as a square planar complex, you'd actually be okay. But it's actually tetrahedral, this particular example. Okay, now I'm just going to go on a little bit more about this, finding an oxidation state and writing formally. So here are a couple of complexes which have been drawn and named, in fact. But what we're going to try and do is we're going to figure out the oxidation state of the acceptor, that's this central cation, and we're also going to write a formula for these ions. Okay, So here we've got a nickel ion as the acceptor. Okay, So it's going to have nickel. We've got a square bracket to show that the charge is spread right over the entire ion. There are six ammonia ligands here, so I'm going to put ammonia as my ligand, and six of them. I'm going to close the square bracket, and now I'm going to figure out what the charge is. Well, the name is telling me I've got a nickel 2 plus ion, six ammonia ligands, each one of them is electrically neutral, so overall the charge on this complex is 2 plus. If I know that the charge on the complex is 2 plus, then I know that the oxidation state of the nickel is, is 2, and that's what this 2 means here. Okay, and There's the formula for it. What's the formula for a tetrachlorocuprate 2 ion? Okay, well the number 2 here is telling me the oxidation number or the oxidation state of the copper but let's try and figure it out I've got copper surrounded by four chloride ligands notice that I'm not writing the charges of the ligands here I'm just showing one charge and that's the entire complex okay we've got an overall charge of 2 minus so there's my formula written I've got four 1 minus ligands Overall, these charges are adding up to 2 minus, so this must be a 2 plus ion at the center here. Okay, so that's just an introduction to complexes. We're going to look in the next film at why it is they're colored, okay, but hopefully you're familiar with key terms there like ligand, complex ion, acceptor, coordinate bond, and coordination number, and you can also come up with some formulas and diagrams, I suppose, 
of complex ions with different coordination numbers. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.